I was just leaving for for Cosmo City. It was month end and we just gotten paid. And then I get into the taxi before I even like get settled, you know. The next thing that I heard was a slap on my face. So this guy was carrying a gun and then he hits hits me with the back of the gun here on my head. And the next thing, you know, I felt so dizzy. Slapped me again on my face. <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't believe it. He took the money, took the phone, took the camera. As this was happening, I'm just telling myself, now if they take my cars, then I'm screwed. I'm not going to allow this. The driver mm. and his friends, there were about seven of them with Se guns and knives. When we got him to into the taxi, then they started beating us. And probably an hour after, I found myself um, at a garage. Throughout history, storytelling has been a fundamental way for humans to connect, learn, and heal. When it comes to traumatic experiences, sharing our stories can offer a therapeutic outlet that promotes healing and growth. In this program, we will explore how sharing traumatic stories can help individuals on their journey towards recovery. I remember just coming here and um, I was in church. Yeah, mm. I was in church putting on my suit, carrying my Bibles. And um, so uh, it was, I think, around past five. I was just leaving for for Cosmo City um, around past five. Just it was just soon after, you know, uh, we we finished church, and then I was with my brother, and um, we're supposed to have actually I was supposed to go with him to my place, and then um, so as we were waiting for the taxi, you know, to board the taxi to go to Cosmo City, I see a taxi that is approaching. And um, looking at this at, at this taxi, um, from a distance, you know, when we are standing on the road, looking at the taxi from a distance approaching, picks up one guy, and um, as it picks up this other guy, we all just like looking at it, staring at the taxi coming, and now, you know, and as it was getting uh, closer and closer to where we were standing, then uh, my brother then chooses to say, you know what? He just says, no, no I'm not. I'm no longer going to your place. And um, um, I think I'll come. Um, I'll come see you. You know, like uh, the following day. And um, so you know, we we start arguing about that. And then, but eventually, he says, no, no, no. I'm not coming. I'm not coming through. And then he he goes back. And then I just bought my my taxi get in there before i even said you know i'm i'm not even thinking of anything you know i'm just there you know and thinking a lot about where i'm going and i'm like you know in my mind just like hey, this dude we're supposed to go together and then now he's just turned his back on me he's going home so yeah and then i get into the taxi before i even like get settled you know and uh the next thing that I heard was a slap on my face. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I just couldn't believe it. And, you know, I, I've, I've always been this person of saying, no, 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 I, um, no one can just do this to me. And then I just, so I'm like, okay, let me just retaliate. And the moment I try to stand up to fight for myself, geez, I felt a big knock on my head so this guy was carrying a gun and then he hits hits me with the back of the gun here on my head and the next thing you know i felt so dizzy slapped me again on my face and yeah there i then like realized that now I'm, I'm i'm now being faced with the reality this thing is not even like a dream it's not even like you know this is this is reality and then I just told myself to calm down, calm down, everything will be okay, calm down. And so as I was just there thinking about all oh, this that is happening, and this guy is going about hitting us. In my in my pocket, I had about, I think it was about uh, 1.7 that was in my pocket here. And then um, I had recently bought my Kodak camera. 
you know um, and then um, I, was, I had an E200 Nokia series phone that I had bought together with my camera and, and, and this wherever I would go I would always be with you know so as I'm there just this guy is taking everything you know took it he took the money took the phone took the camera and then now my my wallet on the other hand had my cards and it was month and I remember very well it was almost it was month end and we just gotten paid so as this was happening I'm just telling myself now if they take my cards then I'm screwed I'm not going to allow this so I dropped my camera down my my wallet. rather my wallet down on the on the floor and then I stepped stepped on it so basically what they were doing is that they would um, be going um, to the nearest ATMs and as they reach to an ATM they will take the card of the person who was there ask for a pin number you don't give them the pin number when they they would stab you literally stabbing you and um, so you know when when they were done taking everything to me and sprayed me at I think it was a spray gun on my on my eyes so I just to like close my eyes and I, everyone was asked to face down so we you know just faced down and when when they picked us picked us up it was around five it was around five and then um they started going you know in circles with us so they took this guy he gave them a wrong pin so when one of the guys actually like um went to the atm to withdraw the cash um realizing that the pin number was wrong came back with a knife hit him on the thigh with a knife you know and i could feel that pain in that guy and the way he screamed yo yeah and uh, the guy gave them the pin they went there took the money went to the next guy beat him took the card went to the ATM again did the very same thing uh, but this one rather he had already he, he gave them the correct pin so they took the man they took the money and then there was one guy from um, jet one guy from jet this guy apparently he didn't have a wallet he didn't have a phone and um, I remember they beat him so hard until I know to a point where that guy was no longer even like you know being responsive i don't even know whether he was dead or alive and then um you know so i think around past 11 11 around past 11 at night now this is now at night and um you know that thing traumatized me for 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 long and i remember when when they were about to take us out you know we're in a place where it was just like it was more of a dam mm -hmm. that was there and um so the guy just like did an emergency break and then i was stamping on my wallet and then my wallet rolled to the front and then he picked up the wallet and he says whose wallet is this and you know as he was asking this i said no nah, i don't know told them it's not mine and I had my um, my my card that was there and then they asked I, I don't know I don't know I don't know I, I'm not even the person there I don't even wallet and um, the only thing that I had I had a camera I had a phone I had money and you took all that from me and then they, they say there's only one guy who didn't have a wallet here and that was the guy who was working from jet and um, so they asked this guy, we want, we want you to give us the PIN number to the bank cards. I remember I was still using Standard Bank then. The guy said, you know, he could not respond as they were asking. And then they just said, you know what, fine, let's, let's leave them here. So they dropped us there and then say, everyone must just run. So where we were heading, you know, it was like a, a passage where they parked and everyone was just supposed to run head on. So the first guy who went out, he ran the second guy and I was the third guy. As they were running, I heard, poof, 
you know like someone fo- you know when you f- when you jump into a swimming pool and i felt like these guys get straight into the water i felt the second guy something and i told myself i'm <laughs> not going into that water because i don't even know what was there you know and um as i was running and then i just like throw myself on the side there was like long grass so i throw myself onto the other side on the side of the grass and then slept there silently and then this guy came running looked at uh he looked you wanted to see if all of us had gone through there and then um so he didn't see me there and then the other guy was from jet actually he left them on the passage he left him on the passage that guy was lying there you know and then when i realized that these guys had gone i then went out and then um i looked at this guy I'm like no i'm not going to stand here i don't even know whether this guy is alive or is dead and so what i had to do was that i just ran i didn't even know where i was um probably an hour after i found myself um at a garage and uh, on that garage i was asking where is cresta from here and as i'm asking these guys these guys didn't even want to entertain me they thought probably i was just trying to come and scam them or something and so they didn't want to entertain me and then they were all drawing back going backwards so i'm like no you know what gentlemen um there was one lady and two guys i'm like you know what um i've been robbed i was hijacked i was in a taxi and um trying to go to cosmo city and but you know the funny thing is um i find myself i'm here but i don't know exactly where i was and um i remember as i'm still trying to you know talk to these people you know so that at least i can find help i get to know exactly where i am mm. um the same taxi that it hijacked us then appears right and i remember there were some guys i think from spares if i'm not mistaken i think it was spares because um as, as these guys were not entertaining me what time was that uh, well I, i wouldn't want to lie about time but I'm, i believe it was already after 11 or 12 mm-hmm. so i went out to go to these guys who were this side And, and these guys were putting a uniform i think they were working in a restaurant that should be spares if i'm not mistaken so i get to these guys and then i want to relate exactly my story again of what has happened to me and why i'm like that. because you know I, i was still in my black suit my white shirt full of blood here yeah? still got my tie and i remember <laughs> and and these guys are even actually shining away from me literally there yeah. i'm like okay you know what um as i'm talking to them this taxi approaches again and these guys wants to board onto the very same taxi so when i realized that this was the very same taxi then i let it no no guys this is this taxi that hijacked us don't get inside there and then this guy the, the driver and the guys who were the accomplices that were with him mm. saw me are letting these guys and then they closed banged the door closed the door and then the taxi veered off with the people no 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 oh, without okay. the people mm. and that's where now these guys now started coming to me no 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 sorry 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 now they're sympathizing with me because they've realized I've already saved them from entering into there they're also going going to be victims mm. right and then uh the good thing is that um I saved them literally But were you not scared? I was scared when I saw the taxi. But and because the taxi I I I had seen it and I knew it. And I told these guys don't go in there. And then when these guys veered off and this is the time now where they came to me sympathizing with me loud on so 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 so. And only what I needed from them was to um give me a phone so that I can phone, you know, home and tell them that this is what has happened. And then I, I remember um calling dad and telling him you know what this is what has happened and he's asking me where I am and I'm asking these guys where am I exactly and telling me that I'm in Sri Lanka Park <laughs> and I'm like I'm not far away from 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 Cresta mm. so and then I'm telling him I'm in um 
place like this and um, so he says he's coming to pick me up and then waited for him and then he took me home and I remember when he get when when he picked me up he thought I was crazy you know because of what happened and they wanted me to to go for therapy uh, which I did not I didn't believe in I didn't even want to go there mm-hmm. and I told him that you know what I'm okay and I wanted to go to work you know um, I remember I was going for my shift on following day it was Sunday and I was starting at five in the morning and um, so but um, I remember I could not make it I didn't go to work that day and then I reported that I'm, I'm not okay I was ejected. I had some issues and fine and then yeah but um, from there you know the reality came you know to me I could not cop up in a taxi I remember after about three or four days when I resumed I went back to work and then my shift were changed because I had not gone on the on that very Sunday so that week they cut me out and then I had to start on the following week mm. the following week I was starting work at 10 a.m. knocking off at 7 p.m. You were still traumatized. I was traumatized. I couldn't get into a text. And you know, where we were working from from four o'clock, you won't have more taxis coming. Mm. Those probably like the taxis that will come there will be maybe a few because we were not many that were using um, public transport then. It was um, maybe just one load of text will be fine, and then the rest maybe you like. You uh, resort to asking for transport from other um, um, guys, you know, who be coming from that works workplace. Mm. So I remember this time, seven o'clock every time when I'm there. Maybe it's only me, or we are two of us in the shift. We are going back home, and you'd go. You wait there. We're close to the. Uh, uh, um, it was close to some uh, uh, shacks, like squatter camps. And um, it was so difficult. I I battled so much, um, and then I had to resort to, um, you know, talking to these taxi drivers. So I, I remember I be I, I actually got two two guys that became friends of mine that I told about what had happened to me, and then they had to at least maybe teach me about. No, if you before you get into a text, you need to know which squad, especially like these ones. There's group one, there's group two, there's group three, there's group mm-hmm. four. If you find a taxi that doesn't have all those, don't get into it because there's so many scams happening lately. And um, I got now to know that group one, group two, group three, group four. How do they work? How do and, I know uh, that this is group one? <laughs> you know, it's written. They have a stick actually on the sc- on the front screen. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, and then that's so. Which know, ones? Um, are dangerous <laughs> no 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 no. I'm saying the mm. ones that don't have that oh, oh okay okay uh, yeah, you, you mean, must not get it's, in it's not registered probably with the association so those and do you remember are, the text was it written that or you don't know nah, the one check? that I, I don't remember whether it's oh, okay. that or not but now I was so conscient every time I'd go to a taxi if it doesn't have those um, I would not even actually like board that taxi and then, uh, so I, I got two, three friends. Um, one of them was Tabo. The other one was um, Siswe. And then the other one, I can't recall the other guy. So now every time when I'd knock off, I'd call Tabo, Siswe, and the other guy to say, please come pick me up. I'll pay. You know, I don't have a problem paying. Whatever amount. <laughs> I just couldn't <laughs> afford to um get into a taxi you know uh, and especially at night sometimes for me to do this thing now verifying whether it's in group or what 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 and it was something that i could not do you know at especially at night so at least it helped me so much but um i remember i could not contend with all these things for 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 that much and um it 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 helped me so much that I had to even go to my workplace and I was like, I don't have money, but I want to buy a car, because taxes for me, <laughs> it's just traumatizing me. It can't, and I couldn't get a car, uh, you know, from, from I couldn't get money from my workplace, 
and um, I didn't want to get money from the bank because of the um, um, you know the rates you know paying money is like uh, when you get credit from the mm-hmm. banks the money that the the red you know uh, it's just too much credit rate it's just too much but you know there was this guy that I met and uh, this guy gave me a car and mm. he says no go drive it for a week and tell me if you want it and uh, so I drove the car um, for a week or so you know and um, as I was driving that car I fell in love with it and um, a week elapsed that guy that guy never came back to me I called him he said no 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 relax it's okay a week el- you know passed second week third week and then a month mm. and um, he says okay no if you want it you can buy it how much we you know discuss on the pricing and everything and then I had to pay him in small uh, pages you know and um, from there until to date I have battled to get into a taxi and uh, the only way I could at least maybe be sober in my mind is mm. if I'm to board a taxi during the day and if I'm with friends mm. but whenever I am alone I get into a taxi and then a taxi maybe there's only one or two people there <laughs> it would always trigger those very same thing that same happened, more memories you know? how so, many people in the taxi by the way when you got um, inside so the people who were in the taxi um the ones who were robbed i think we we were four also oh, when you went inside there were four people no no no, no. Eh. there were no four people the mm. ones that i saw getting into the taxi were four because when the taxi was picking up mm. i was standing on the road and i could see it picked one guy second guy third guy and i was the fourth guy the last one there is the, the last one okay to, to, to pull the taxi and then now inside we didn't know that there there were other guys that were there i think they were about all in all the the driver and his friend there were about seven of them with guns and knives when we got into into the taxi then they started beating us and you know um and i've i've, I've always said this to myself that i i thank god on that day that my brother didn't come in uh, didn't board the taxi because i know for him it was going to be chaos it was going to be trouble um because i know him with the temper he could have maybe died on that day um you know when i tried to fight back i could tell that these guys even the way they were insulting you 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 could tell that the language there is strong language and that tells you to say you know what i'm not here to play give me what i want and then you guys can go they were not there to negotiate with you you know so um, that's that's exactly how it happened but fast forward to today i think i, I think i've healed i mean they always say um time time heals you know um i, I never went for any therapy I, i didn't want to go for therapy i i just i just didn't believe in it and um i think for me time did did help um i managed to heal over time and um uh, got past this thing and um good thing i made a lot of friends you know in the taxi industry now i got a lot of people that i know you know whenever i want a taxi even if i'm doing any um uh we 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 driving maybe to distant place where many people are always come with those guys and say please help us we need to go to this place and that place and just to try and avoid all these things yeah that's my life that's my story but uh did you get to hear other people's stories that got you you know like sometimes when you hear another person's story it makes you feel better or you makes you feel like hey, i didn't really go through the most this person went through the most so as for you did you did somebody tell you what they, what happened to them that made you help you in your healing because the reason why i'm asking is because when it happened to me when i listened to you it made me feel as if my story was better but exactly. it made me feel as if exactly so mm. you know you know you know um i, I like that part because mm. you know what when when you hear of of other people's um other people's stories mm. you know um they make you laugh 
mm-hmm. and 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 you can resonate with them that mm. ah, I'm not alone in this mm-hmm. thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember my friend also telling me of his story when when he he, he was coming from KZ10 and then he, he dropped off uh, the bus in in in, in um, um, Park Stash. Mm-hmm. And uh, those guys, they morrowed him so much. <laughs> they beat him, you know, took all his stuff, his bag, his last money, last cent that he had, you know. And um, he had to walk to get to his place where he was going. Clothes gone, the bag's gone, money's gone, his wallet is gone. IDs, you know, and um, good thing by then he said he didn't have a bank account. So they... It, it was an issue of just him going back to home affairs and, and sorting out his ID and um, other than that, yeah. But he was beaten. And then um, I remember <laughs> I remember my, 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 my other brother as well. Um, he, he had to, he was working in Newville. Mm. So as he was working in Newville, he meets with this old man and, and this old man is just talking to him, talking to him and like, ah, Young man, our things, our things. I mean, uh, back home, things are bad. Things are bad, man. Joins back is getting bad and bad by day. Mm. Um, <clears throat> and, and now, yeah, life is tough, my boy. Life is tough. And um, so, as he was, as he was with this this old man, he never thought of anything, mm. you know, ill from this old man. And so he starts walking with the old man, and then you know they they just talking. And while is the old man is leading him to a place where there were guys waiting for him. So now the old man, as he's getting closer to where these guys are, it's a passage. Mm. And then in that place, I think this guy, so he says there will be a passage where they go through going to their places after dropping off the taxi. So this old man will always be situated at that place. When he sees, he looks for someone that he can be able to like a victim that he can take to those guys to, you know, uh, and then those guys will deal with the, those people. But how do how does he take them so if they are? So what he does go, is eh. that he comes when 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 people drop off the taxi, he just like, you know, looks at the people and then he goes to one, identifies one person that he thinks maybe this one might have money, and then he talks to you in a way that you know he's an elderly person. You can never think anything ill of that man. And then um, you know he's just starts telling you know uh, telling telling you stories and so he says this man starts telling you stories ah man young man um, you mm-hmm. know the old people there at home don't forget them you know I just thought I should tell you that and I want a life in jaws and he's just saying things to you know to try and get your attention mm-hmm. and as he does that you know you 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 never think anything ill from this man. And then he says, you know what, let me tell you something. And then so he, they say, he will start telling you something, uh, telling you stories and, you know, and you're not realizing that this man is taking you to his friends. Mm-hmm. When he gets to that place where these guys are situated. Mm. But you, you're going home. You're going home. Mm-hmm. Remember, you're passing through a passage. Mm. These oh, guys are okay. standing probably like... Um, towards the end of okay the, okay of no the i get you i get you right okay and, uh, so every time you're always forced to pass through that passage to, to pass when you're going wherever place, you're going whenever you're going okay that. okay and so when when he is about to reach to where those guys are mm-hmm. he leaves you alone and then he just runs mm-hmm. and then these guys will take you and deal with you take your phone your money and everything mm-hmm. and so my 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 friend says this is what they did to him and you know, only after some time when he sees this old man with another guy again and he approaches this man and this man runs away calling those for backup from his friends. Mm. That's when the community then realized that there was a syndicate because now a lot of people had stories that they were giving from this very same old man. Many people were being robbed. They were using this old man to lure people to get to where those guys are and then they take your money, your phone, and everything. Sometimes people will be beaten, and you know, you know how frustrating that is. But when 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 I would hear all these stories, you know, 
it 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 they they help you to heal you know um you you, you know for a fact that one day is one day some i mean it, it, you 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 can't you can't shy away from it you know it's, a lot of people have had you know mm-hmm. encounters with 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 these things that mm-hmm. we are talking about right now they've they've encountered a lot of stuff you know from uh, different people uh, talk of people some being hijacked i remember another uh, a friend of um, my cousin mm. where you know just he just came with his car um, he had bought his car like as in today he bought his car after buying that car he went with his car parked it in a on his, inside his yard right and then the following morning that car was taken away from him and i could i could i could, I could imagine the pain he was going through as he was uh, relating the story to me he had cash he bought a car and he's mm-hmm. so happy that now my life could be easier going to work and uh, back then we they were they were stealing these uh, velocity cars and that mm-hmm. was the car that he had bought you know as a young man you know not yet married as well um, he's still enjoying he wants to mm-hmm. you know but those cars were the cars that were being targeted and comes after buying that car these guys came with a bolt cutter cut the key on the gate took the car reversed it and then off they went with the car so yeah that's you know that's that's the life in Johannesburg. That's the life. I mean, ev- everywhere you go, not pretty much Johannesburg, but everywhere you go, I mean, people have got stories that they can tell. But the the more you listen to these stories, the more you realize that, you know what, I'm not alone in this. And um, you you can resonate with someone and actually be able to um, to, st- to extend you know a hand to them. And tell them, you know what? This is not the end of the road. Yes, it has happened to you, but it happened to me. But here am I today. I'm still alive and kicking, and um, life still goes on. So, don't, don't, don't beat yourself, you know, um, over this thing. Don't be hard on yourself, uh, because a lot of stuff go, you know, into one's mind, one's head, and. I've I've had also of encounters where even some would even take the because of trauma mm-hmm. because that thing is too heavy you know mm-hmm. especially the early days you battle to 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 comprehend all this thing and then lastly maybe my brother-in-law um, staying in um, Alexandra um, they just moved in there and um, so. <laughs> Around past eight, around it was around past eight, and um, so they they are always they always lock the doors. But around past eight, these guys jumped into the into the yard. Now it seems like this thing was like um, <laughs> you know it, it seems like this thing was staged in a way because they were awaiting for the doors to be opened. And it seems that they knew that all oh, these guys, they will go out because they, they didn't have a tape inside the house. The tape was outside. So they were waiting for, for them there. And it was during load shedding. And when load shedding, actually when power came back, lights went on. And then they opened the door and the wife of my brother-in-law was going out to go and take water. So he went outside. I mean sorry she went mm-hmm. outside to fetch water mm-hmm. while least he was in the house and as she went outside these guys came in beat my brother they always beat <laughs> beat him so much mm-hmm. and then when she was coming they closed the door so and then i remember he had some he was fixing laptops and phones mm-hmm. and um so they took all the laptops and the phones and the cash that they had in the house, mm. took all of it away. And he, the wife was traumatized, he was traumatized, and they had to leave that very same week. 
that place and looked for a, a place in a different town rather and then where they moved to um they couldn't stay there without the doors being locked mm-hmm. so in each and every day when you go out you lock when you come in you lock that was and it was you could you could realize that this person is traumatized if ever there can be anyone on the door the way he he reacts is like as if all those guys are gay so it, it it became it became a problem for him um but well today <laughs> when we when we talk about all these things we always laugh about them you know he has managed as well to heal and moved on and um yeah i mean that that's life we we all go through this at some point but yeah they say time is the master of us all you know time for me i think healed um and also maybe coupled with um you know uh reading spiritual books and uh spending time with um um people you know from church it it it, it helped me spending time with people from church it helped me a lot you know i had to um you know whenever i would relate my story to 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 some of the guys would laugh about it you know and um so yeah it it did time did help um and 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 also spending time with 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 other folk you know from church yeah so yeah i mean some some people go as far as to open up uh, some community groups mm-hmm. where they go to meet yeah, and discuss yeah, yeah. you know they discuss a lot of stuff you know um sharing their stories at least it heals because i think i think there's always this notion with us as humans um the more we share our stories with each other we we get to a point where you realize that you know what um i'm not living in a vacuum you know i'm not living in a vacuum uh, what happens on the left si- left hand side also happens on the right hand side so i shouldn't beat myself up over what befell me but um you know I should just like lift my head up and move on with life you know um <laughs> My 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 wife had the same thing when she was still working she dropped off the taxi the taxi is just like maybe it's 100 meters from uh where she drops off the taxi it's 100 meters to my place our place as she was there dropping off the taxi this old man comes to him asking for a saloon i'm i'm looking for a saloon around this like ah, no, no, i don't know of any saloon here mm. but you can go that side there is a salon that i know of you know if you go this side so as he is trying to um point out directions mm. for this man mm. to go to the salon her handbag was just put here mm. and this man just grabs the handbag pull it down runs with it adjacent to her was a car already waiting and then this old man went, uh, veered off with the car and i just go to home i find someone crying why are you crying and she can't tell me exactly i'm like why what's wrong and then now she tells me they've taken her handbag in that bag were phones money um you know and I'm like you know what just 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 forget about it you know mm, but don't you think those people they work with some <laughs> They feel it when you put something. But <laughs> there is never a, a day where I've ever heard anybody like you know, you know, you know, only you now you're they, talking about the jet guy, but yeah, still there were people that were in, in there that had exactly. money. But yeah. do they have something that they use to smell yeah, this thing? That, 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 that is the funny money. thing, you know, and um seems like these people know where there's money and they know where there's no money. They just don't whenever they are going, they know that the, the, there is a bargain for them. They right they right they just don't go in jail you know from someone who doesn't have anything you know so everyone that will come and tell you a story i don't know whether maybe some of us will be you know maybe adding up stuff that are not there but majority you will always tell you i had money my phone was taken this and this was done you know they they did they, they just don't go to someone who doesn't have money because you can imagine there's 
thousands of us on the streets but they it's like they've got like some eyes that screen to say that one no that one no that one no maybe yeah that one and they come for you and they find what they want and they take it and they go so these people know exactly what they are when, when they coming to you they know exactly that there is money there and they come and grab it and then and then they go yeah. you know one of the good things about um, sharing your your story one of the good things opening your heart to someone else it it it, it removes the burden that you are carrying because the more you remain you know holding to this thing it becomes so heavy on you as well um and and all those reflections they keep coming coming back yeah. but the more you talk and discuss with others the more you realize that i mean this world that we are living in we have a lot of issues that are happening a lot of things that are there and um maybe this was just one of those you know and i became a victim of it and um but it's not the end of the world yeah. i still have a life to live you know i still have a life to live and so you just got to like you know um move on this is my life this is my story while sharing traumatic stories is a deeply personal and sometimes challenging process it can be a transformative journey towards healing and growth by breaking the silence survivors find connection support and empowerment they reclaim their identity and contribute to a society that is more aware compassionate and resilient remember every story shared has the potential to make a difference both for the storyteller and those who are listening so the people that have helped me to heal i've asked them to come on the show i've asked them to tell their stories and for you guys will be able to as well tell your story and heal it's not going to be a channel where we focus about robbery or being scammed it's going to be a program that is called my life my story you can share a story about your life about anything that has happened in your life something that can help somebody else out there to heal or be aware of things that are happening around. If you would like to share it with us, we are here to listen and we are here to welcome any story that anybody would like to share. There's a number and an email address that will be at the bottom of the screen. But this journey that we have started, I feel like for me personally, it will help me to heal. It has helped me so far because we have spoken to so many people so far that have told us about their story of what they're going through, what they went through, and by them listening to other people as well, they also healed and from there i'm also wishing the same for you that is watching thank you guys for joining us on this journey of my life my story